Now let's return to one of our top stories, the reported presence of North Korean troops in Russia. The U.S. estimating that up to 10,000 troops have been deployed in Russia, raising concerns that may, they may soon be taking part in combat. It comes as Russian troops continue their advance in the east of Ukraine and uh, all uh, analysis seems to suggest that this is a difficult time for Ukraine. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now on the line from London by the European Affairs Analyst, Dr. Marek Laskovic. Uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us, uh, Dr. Uh, Laskovic. Lots of fast-moving parts, apparently, around Russia and Ukraine. First of all, let's start with the uh, reported presence of North Korean troops in Russia. Is that now incontrovertibly correct? It would appear to be the case because so many people are confirming it, but it remains to be said that Russia, that is to say Moscow, especially President Putin, has not openly stated how many troops they are, what they are to be used for, or for that matter, anything more than he can do this if he so wishes. So. It's a typical situation, I'm afraid, with Russia, where the truth is hard to be certain of, but it would appear to be the case, judging by everything, that there are need, indeed North Korean troops, some of which would appear to be sent to the Kursk region where the Ukraine has made an incursion. I mean, you'd have to wonder, or I certainly would have to wonder, um, why the Russians appear to need these North Korean troops at a time when Russia appears to be making considerable gains in Ukraine? Yes, there is that aspect, but there are several advantages I can think of straight away. I presume this is what they thought of. First of all, it means the ties between North Korea and Russia are strengthened at a time when both nations need a clear ally, as opposed to semi-allies like China or Iran. Number two, it will gain North Korea battle experience, which they may need. After all, please note, North Korea has never formally stated that South Korea does not belong to it. And therefore, gaining battle experience for a possible subsequent uh, war there, it would be very useful. Point number three, for Russians, assuming North Korea does nothing more than hold the line in Kurtz, this will free up Russian troops for the assault on the key area of eastern Ukraine, where they are making indeed progress, but the faster progress, the better. And if they manage to capture Pokrovsk, that will be a very significant move. And they are now only 18 kilometers, that's to say 10 miles away. Number four, it is also another aspect for Russia that by having allies on the front line means that the notion that the Russians will run out of troops is simply now risable. It's quite clear that they can raise more and more troops. Ukraine, for its part, has tried to raise another 160,000 by another mobilization drive. But the problem is many Ukrainians don't want to necessarily fight there. And that therefore, the Ukrainians are likely to be the first to run out of troops. So I can think of several advantages. There are no real disadvantages for Russia or for North Korea that they have taken this step. And in the meantime, uh, you mentioned there, uh, Dr. Laskovich, um, that the Russians were advancing in the eastern Donetsk region. We're hearing that they've fully captured the mining town of Selidov. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but I mean, that is en route to Pokrovsk, is it? Yes. The key point is they're heading for Pokrovsk slowly but surely. In effect, this is kind of a war of attrition, and they want to capture this town not only for its strategic purposes, but also as a point of morale, rather like Verdun was in World War I. And as they are approaching it, there is talk of, in, in, uh, generally, as you know, in the media, of what this would mean for Ukraine if it were to fall. So therefore, they are making slow but steady progress, in part because the Ukrainians have split their forces by making the incursion into Kursk, which has undoubtedly weakened their ability to resist the Russians in the key front, which is eastern Ukraine, not Kursk. 
And um, we're also hearing that as a result of all this uh, taking place, you know, the North Koreans turning up uh, allegedly in Russia, the Russians making advances in Ukraine, that Ukraine is planning to draft another 160,000 troops into its military. Where are those people going to come from? Well, there undoubtedly probably is another 160 out there. The real problem is that many Ukrainians don't want to fight. And this mobilization drive is unlikely to produce a whole 160. Uh, it would appear more to the point that what Ukraine has done by signalizing this mobilization drive is to say, to show that it has strength in depth. But if these troops don't materialize, it will be have the exact opposite PR effect in the sense it will show the Ukraine's amount of troops has dried up. Therefore, this mobilization drive will in itself be a key significant figure as to whether Ukraine itself can hold out for uh, much longer. It, I repeat, if Pokrovsk were to fall, it does not only mean that Eastern Donetsk region is, is now in, in Russia's grasp, but th it is en route to Kiev as a point. You know, one has to bear in mind that the Russians have never formally stated they do not want to conquer Ukraine. On the contrary, it would appear they want to. So in the same way that President Zelensky keeps talking about all Russian occupied territory returning to uh, Ukraine. As far as I can tell, Russia is saying it still wants the whole of Ukraine. So it, uh, it should be very interesting. And therefore, this mobilization drive will be a key indicator as to whether Ukraine can hold out. Dr. Marek, thank you very much indeed. Dr. Marek Laskovic is a European affairs analyst. He was talking to me there on the line from London.